Welcome to Chapter 1, Building a High Energy Food Plan. Please be aware that you'll need to review these slides yourself as there are links to outside internet sources that you are going to need access to. In our textbook we learn to eat three kinds of foods at each meal, but 35 different foods each week. We should eat foods that are in their natural state, in other words, um, that have not been processed. And we should eat processed foods in moderation. So the best breakdown would be try to eat 85 to 90 percent of your food in their natural or healthy state and um, try to keep 10 percent um, to be your less nutritional food. So in other words, it's okay to not eat perfectly all the time. So what I want you to do is make a list on a sheet of paper of the foods that you typically eat. Try to list them individually. Um, for example, if you eat a sandwich, what are all the parts of that sandwich? Um, and see if you can get 35 foods because that should be your goal. And then I want you to circle the foods that you feel are most natural and under-processed. Um, and what percentage of your food, now that you see your list, do you think is processed? The food groups are grains, vegetables, fruits, proteins, and dairy products. You'll need access to your slides for this, but I want you to take a look at how many servings that you actually need. This was an assignment required by the class. Um, so click on My Plate Daily Food Plan um, and find out exactly how many servings you need. And then I want you to um, just study each of the food groups and the oils so that you know what foods are part of these groups. Then I want you to figure out what is the serving unit for each food group. So it's either going to be cups or ounces. I want you to find that out for yourself. And then try to assess what is the difference between what you believe is a typical portion when you sit down to a meal and a serving from my plate. You will find there are vast differences, especially um, when you're looking at proteins because they're measured in one ounce equivalents. So please compare a typical portion with servings. And then I want you to take a look at the portion distortion quiz. Um, it's actually kind of fun. When you eat grains, make sure they are 100% whole grain, um, not refined. Um, try to make half your grains whole grain. For vegetables, um, the good thing to know is that if you don't like fruit, then you can use vegetables to make up for inadequate fruit intake. Um, eat a lot when you can. Uh, you can eat it fresh, you can eat it frozen, and you can also eat canned fruit, canned vegetables, but make sure they are rinsed, okay, to get the sodium out. And the best way for cooking is microwaving, steaming, or walking, because it cooks quickly and it tries to maintain those nutrients. Um, now go back to your list and see um, how you did on vegetables. Um, look for color and variety. Um, the key nutrients that you get from your vegetables are typically vitamin C, potassium, fiber, carotene, and lycopene. And a, a good example of getting fruits into your day would be a, a banana and orange juice for breakfast, and that would cover your daily minimum. Um, other things you can do are to try dried fruit rather than eating energy bars. And fruit smoothies, but not fruit smoothies that contain ice cream or um, you know frozen yogurt or things like that. Try to have it be made of just fruit and ice. Now look at your list of fruits. Um, what colors are you getting? Are you getting lots of variety? And again with fruits your key source of nutrients or your key nutrients are vitamin C and potassium. How do you feel about eating organic? Here are the pros to eating organic. There are no chemical fertilizers. There are no insecticides. There are no weed killers. There are no growth hormones. There are no antibiotics or medications. And we support local farmers and green space. The cons of eating organic are you'll pay more, about 30% more. 
Um, oftentimes companies use it as a marketing ploy. So you'll see it on packaging of foods that are not necessarily good for you and they're highly processed, but yet it says the word organic um, trying to get you to buy their product. So beware of that. And also, most items that you buy organic you could probably peel or wash and have it be just fine. So um, what you need to do is check out some of the things where you eat the skin and the skin is porous. Um, those might be um, fruits and vegetables of concern. In the dairy area, um, the goal is to get calcium and protein. Okay, And the common dairy foods you will see are milk, yogurt, and cheese. They also contain vitamin D if it's fortified with vitamin D. And um, you can also eat non-lactose um, containing foods. So for example, you could get have soy milk, um, but you need to be aware that it should be fortified and have enough calcium, vitamin D, and protein. Um, you could drink almond milk. Um, you can drink rice milk. So there are lots of options, but just make sure that they are also fortified with those key items. Uh, a typical serving of calcium should be 300 milligrams. So you'll find that in three cups of broccoli, eight cups of spinach, or 30 cups of unfortified soy milk. Soy milk. So you can see that you have to eat more of other things in order to do something that you could get out of a glass of milk. Um, unfortunately, not everybody enjoys milk or can drink milk. Uh, the other thing is frozen yogurt, um, about a third of a serving, um, but twice the calories of um, the typical serving of calcium. So literally you would have to eat a lot more frozen yogurt in order to get the benefit, and at that point it's not so good for you, um, too much sugar. Uh, but it's a great little treat. Uh, look at your calcium foods. Uh, how do you think you're going to boost your calcium intake? Because I can pretty much guarantee that most people are not getting enough in their diet. Um, and I know a lot of people supplement for that reason. In the protein group, you're looking at meats, seafood, eggs, poultry, nuts, beans, and legumes. And legumes are basically anything that's found in a pod, which includes some beans. Um, <coughs> You should be getting, in a typical day, this is not a serving, this is a day, five to seven total ounces of protein um, from a meat type source or a bean or legume, or um, two to th plus two to three cups of milk um, or a milk replacement. So um, that's not too hard to get, and a lot of people are probably overdoing it in the protein area. You probably discovered that um, when you analyzed your food intake. Um, try to make sure that the poultry is skinless when you eat it. Try to keep fish to 12 ounces per week. You don't want to overdo it there either. Um, and you know things like lean roast beef when you go to um, you know you go to Subway, you go to Jimmy John's, whatever. Um, choose the lean cuts. And peanut butter is great too. But remember, um, peanut butter is high in calories. Um, because it's so high in fat. So keep your serving size uh, minimal, like um, one to two teaspoons of peanut butter is plenty per day and will provide you with lots of protein. Excess protein is not stored as bulging muscles. If you eat more protein than what is recommended, and we'll study this in a later chapter, um, it can be stored as fat if you don't use it for energy and the body doesn't like to have to convert protein to energy. So eat what is required for you and don't overdo it. You're not going to give yourself bigger muscles by eating more protein. Um, it's resistance training that will do that for you. Um, so look back at your list of foods and how are you doing on protein? For fats and oils, the key is to watch saturated fat and trans fats because they are hard on the heart and the arteries. Um, look in your food labels for the word hydrogenated um, and it can be hidden in there um, but hydrogenated basically means trans fats and um, these can raise your bad cholesterol and lower your good cholesterol so that's not good. 
Um, if you're choosing oils, make sure they're soft or liquid. If they're hard, they are saturated. Uh, if they're hard at room temperature, they are saturated. So, you know when you cook meat on the frying pan and um, it cooks down to an oil while you're cooking it, but then you take the meat off the pan and the pan cools and later on you see this hard layer of fat sitting on the pan. That's what's bad for your arteries. Your serving for the total for the day is five teaspoons. Um, you shouldn't go over 20 to 35 percent. Um, and for clients in training, about 25 percent is a good goal. Choose things like olive oil, peanut butter, nuts, and ground flaxseed, for example. Do you like to eat sweets? I do. Um, just keep them in moderation and be sure to enjoy a small treat. Um, Treats you'll eat more of if you're starving. So again, if you're eating every three to four hours, you're less likely to want to binge on a lot of sugar once you see it. So, so try to eat healthfully and fill up on healthful foods first. 10% of your calories from sugar is completely fine. Um, molasses, blackstrap molasses, contains potassium, calcium, and iron, but you'd have to eat an awful lot of it to get those nutrients. The same thing. Um, in the book she recommends jam over jelly because jam contains some fruit in it but again you'd have to eat an awful lot to really get the benefit so if you're just having a small snack I think whatever you choose would be fine there and then um, we're recommending that you eat a variety of good foods that you eat every two to four hours that you eat when you're hungry and stop when you're content so try to avoid value meals because value meals basically mean that you're going to get more calories than you than you need. They're, they're just, it's just too much food. And um, if you're dieting um, and you're trying to lose weight, make sure you're choosing nutrient-dense foods. You really don't have a whole lot of room to eat the junk food if you're trying to cut back because you want to make sure you're getting enough nutrients in your diet. So what changes are you going to make? Make sure you set a SMART goal that's specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. If you're doing a diet analysis, um, you can do it for yourself or for your client, or you can practice on a family member. But what you want to do is evaluate your food intake for three days. That gives you a good average of what you typically eat in a week. It's actually good to take a look at two weekdays and one weekend day, so you get a really good, a good sample. Um, the first time you evaluate everything that's written down, look at it based on just the food groups alone. Are you getting all the food groups and are you getting the variety within the food groups? Um, and take a look at how many servings you're getting within each of the food groups. Then enter all the foods into My Plates Super Tracker and go to Food Tracker and, um, and it'll give you some interesting results in terms of how you did. The, will be more specific than your initial evaluation just on food groups alone. Uh, when you make suggestions, um, make suggestions for replacing foods that may be um, high in fat or too much sugar um, with healthier foods that are more whole and natural. Um, never say that a food is bad or good. Um, because really there's room for all foods in a well-rounded diet. Never say to stop a habit. If you have a client that's drinking a lot of soda, for example, um, if you tell them just to stop that and it's something that they've done every day um, for their whole life, then it's unlikely that you're going to be able to get them to just quit. Um, so what you should do is recommend replacements like um, at this meal drink some water or at this meal drink some orange juice and they're less likely to have that need um, over time but if you ask them to quit you're asking for trouble and then always be positive if you keep um, beating somebody up in terms of what they're eating like oh my goodness I can't believe you ate that or you shouldn't eat this or you shouldn't eat that uh, instead Focus on some of the good things they're doing. Are they eating every three to four hours? Are they getting some good food in for breakfast? Are they getting whole foods? Are they eating whole grains? So when they do something good, um, commend them for it. So there's a, those are some um, pieces of advice that I hope will help you while you're working with clients. Thank you so much.